welcome back to my channel and to another Disney Cruise Line video. Now if you don't know this about me already, it's not like I haven't mentioned it on my channel before. I am a Disney Cruise Line crew member, but obviously with the last year that's been happening with the pandemic and everything, I haven't been on board recently, but I have been filming lots of Disney Cruise Line content for you to watch on my channel. So if you want to watch any of that, I've got videos all about my experience so far working for Disney Cruise Line. If you want to watch that, I'll leave a playlist to that below. And this video, I thought I would do something a little bit different and I would put my knowledge as a crew member um, to you guys and give you guys some hints and tips about what your first Disney cruise might be like. I know with the Disney Magic at Sea sailings happening soon, a lot of people might be going on their first Disney cruise line uh, cruise for that. Or I don't know if you had a cruise booked in the last year or so and it was supposed to be your first Disney cruise and you're having to rebook that. Whenever you're going on your first Disney cruise, I hope this video helps in some sort of way. So I'm gonna go through, I guess, each stage of your Disney cruise from pre-embarkation, embarkation day, during your Disney cruise to your debark day. Let's get started with pre-embarkation day. Now, a lot of the pre-embarkation information I do have is about like booking things online so that it saves you time once you are on the ship so that you're not queuing, wasting unnecessary cruise time where you could be doing something much more exciting than waiting in a queue. So for instance, with activities online, so for adults, I guess we'll talk about like with your dining in Paolo or Remy, or maybe if you want to go to the spa or if you want to book a seminar, like a beverage seminar or something like that, you can do that online. You could also book special character meet and greets online. So you can do your princess gathering, you could do frozen meet and greets, etc. You can also do all of this on board the ship as well. So if you don't really want to book it online, um, you can book it on the ship. But I guess if you want to guarantee that you do get to do those experiences, it's best to do it online before you head on the ship. Let's talk about registering your kids online. Uh, if you don't know, that's my job on the ship. I work in the kids clubs and time and time again, we get so many people every single um, embarkation day wasting so many hours of their time waiting in those lines to confirm registration and to go through things with us that you could have easily have done online. It's a lot of information for you guys to have to give us in one short space of time that you could have just done already online. But I will say, don't give us unnecessary information. Don't put anything in there that we don't need to know about that isn't gonna affect the time in the kids club. For us, the only things we need to know about really is if they have a medical condition or if they have a food allergy or something like that that's going to affect them while they're in these activity spaces. Things that might affect them that we can help a little bit with like eating etc. Um, so for instance give us as much information as possible like say if your child has a food allergy make sure that say if it's a peanut allergy you tell us if they have an EpiPen for it, if they're going to bring the EpiPen into the space with them, if they can administer that EpiPen by themselves or if they're going to need help with it. We do obviously get trained on that so if we need to administer it we can or if we need to call you to be able to do that. Is the allergy through touch? Is it through ingestion? Is it airborne? Can they be in the area where there might be cross-contamination? So can they have food with us in the spaces? Can they participate in cooking programs? They never eat the actual uh, food that they are going to be making but the food that they do eat like for instance when they make cookies and cupcakes they are made in an area of the bakery that might have cross-contamination with nuts so be aware of that. Those kind of things to do with food allergies as well as things like with the uh, red dye allergies and those kind of things we need to know about that as well if they can participate again in the cooking programs because we use um, in the cupcake making sprinkles and frosting, coloured frosting, so can they participate in those or can they just have a plain cupcake? Can they have face paint? Can they eat the popsicles on Castaway Key that we have for the kids because they do mm, possibly contain red dye because they've got strawberries and things like that in them? Can they have uh, the tattoos that we give them out sometimes? All of this information is quite important for us to know, so that kind of medical or dietary information we need to know about, make sure it's quite detailed don't let us know anything else that we don't really need to know about. If it's not really that big of a deal, then we don't need to know it. Um, if you want to just do that on the actual cruise, that's fine. But like I said, the queues can get very, very long outside the kids clubs on embarkation day because people think that you have to do it then and there, but you can already do it online. But if you are going to do that, like I said, make sure that those notes are detailed and relevant and nothing irrelevant that we don't need to know about. Also, another helpful handy tip for you 
when you are checking your child out of the youth activity spaces you have to know a secret word most of the time when people have booked a disney cruise a year two years before the actual cruise that they are then going on they forget what that secret word is and then when we ask it to you on inbox day or the first time you check your child out and you don't know it please try and remember it write it down somewhere so that you're gonna know it because it's not just a random word that they've asked you to write we're gonna want to know what it is because it is very important that we know that and make sure that every adult in your party knows that as well that's going to be able to check your child out because if they don't then it's going to cause a lot of kerfuffle at the checkout process um for the child so yes please remember your secret words so that's kids club let's talk about lanyards so a lot of the time when people are on disney cruises they have the key to the world card if they have it in pockets or something they're like fumbling around trying to find it to get it into rooms or to get kids out of kids club or to pay for something obviously on your second third etc disney cruise you do get given a lanyard because of your castaway club status that you have but on your first to disney cruise you do not get given one of those lanyards and if you don't want to pay however much it is for a lanyard in the shops on board you can probably bring one with you on the ship so maybe buy one online make sure it has a little pouch at the bottom of it so that you can put your stuff in there make sure you get one of those because it's very handy to have that lanyard with you then when you are on the ship the next one that i have is the navigator app so you can download it on the first couple of hours of your cruise before we sail away but uh after that there's not really any wi-fi for the first little while so make sure you do download the navigator app beforehand so the Navigator app has all of the information that you're going to need to know about the cruise. It has information about your dining rotations, it has information about food and drinks, it has information about different amenities, show times, movie information about the different showings that are going to be going on, it has information about the kids clubs, they have a whole dedicated section for that. So yeah, it has pretty much everything you need to know about the cruise on the app already. It also has a messaging feature which is very very useful to message in between like your family members and everything. You can link up and talk to each other um, so make sure you have it already on your phone before you head on the cruise. Plus I think it has a countdown on, on there so it can get you a little bit excited about your Disney cruise and it tells you how many days you've got until your cruise so you can count down but then once it is time to go on board it has all of the very necessary and important information you're going to need to know about for your Disney cruise. Embarkation day. So you can check in online beforehand actually which i didn't know until recently but yeah you can check in rather than checking in at the terminal beforehand so you don't have to go through all of those queues again i'm just trying to save as much time for you guys as i possibly can so rather than having to wait in all of those lines and be some of the last people to get the embarkation time then at the end of the day you can skip all of those lines and yeah bypass all of that and try and get on as soon as you can because you can also pick your embarkation times with those embarkation times you um can't change them so if you end up with different members of your party with different embark times you can't change them so you have the same time so for instance if you've got a whole family that's going so you've got you guys so like mum dad kids and then you've got grandparents and then aunties and uncles and cousins if they all have different times to you because they're in different state rooms or whatever you can't change the time so that you're all embarking together so whoever's on first gets to just reunite with the family when they um embark and they get to see them embark which is quite cute if you message them and be like hey we're about to come on board disney can take your luggage uh for you onto the ship uh, i think they do this in the terminal but obviously if you're staying in a disney hotel i think they can do it from there as well i think there's like a form that you have to fill out that you can get if you let them know that you're going on a disney cruise and then it ends up in your stateroom but just make sure that when you have whatever bag or if you're going to bring a little suitcase or a carry-on or whatever with you to the ship that you have everything that you need in there that you might want to have for the first couple of hours when you don't have your suitcases because um, your rooms aren't available until the afternoon so maybe around 1 30 2 o'clock that's when your rooms are available they're still cleaning them and setting setting them up ready for you before that time so you can't access your cases if you have got disney to take your cases onto the ship for you so make sure you have everything you need when you are waiting for that time though you can i don't know take a ship tour and walk around the ship and just get your bearings and take note of where different things are so that if you want to remember where they are you kind of already know that already sort of get your bearings and just take it all in um just so you have a quick little idea of where things are aft is at the back of the ship midship obviously is the middle of the ship and forward is the front of the ship 
and then you have the port side which is the left side of the ship and starboard is the right side of the ship because that's going to be how things are made a note of on the ship it'll say like deck 11 port side or deck 12 aft and you'll be like i don't know where i am um, especially when you're looking for rooms or you're trying to make your way from one end of the ship to go from your room to your dining room it can get a little bit confusing so that's where those things are but you can also go get food if you want to if you're hungry if you've not eaten since you had your breakfast before you embarked you can go and get food in at least one sit down restaurant usually it's animator's palette you can also go get food in the buffet which is cabanas and then the quick service which they also have on the pool deck so that's embarkation day so let's go on to during your cruise the things that you can expect to happen throughout the cruise and some little tips and tricks that i have for you that you can do on that cruise then uh, a lot of people don't realize that 90 percent or like the majority of the things on the ship are included in the price of your cruise so a lot of people think oh no i have to book for that or like oh that's extra money not really a lot of the time a lot of the amenities a lot of the activities or sh like different game shows or trivias or etc that are going on they're all free they're all included in the price so yeah make sure you take part in those and go and have fun make sure you soak up all of the offerings that Disney Cruise Line have for you throughout the whole of the cruise for all ages so make sure you participate in those your dining rotations so you do have the same server every single night during your cruise so if you have for instance a food intolerance or food that you don't like or food that you really really loved one night you can let them know all of these sort of things and they will get to know you and get to know what you like what you don't like what you can and can't eat and they can really help you out throughout your dining experience and they can make some magic for you and you don't know sort out what you really want to eat or what you really don't want to eat and make that a good experience for you it's very personalized i love that they do that that it is that same server the whole time and you really get to know them throughout that cruise you could order the food that you would have in your dining rotation that night to your room so for instance if you're maybe not feeling up to going down to the dining room or you just want to chill out in your room and watch a movie or watch one of the shows that they have in the theater on your tv or you just want to sit out on your balcony and eat your food you can do that you can order it to your room you don't have to sit in the dining room every night and eat that so that's another option for you as well and you can order mickey bars from the room service so definitely do that okay another thing that i really love doing i do this on cast key most of the time but you can also do it on the ship um in the outdoor dining areas the quick service areas so they have an ice cream machine usually it's probably at the moment with covid in the next couple of months years whatever it might be that somebody else does it for you to um reduce like contamination and everything but they have the um, machines where you, it's like the soft serve ice creams and then they also have in the quick service food area cookies combine those two and make a cookie sandwich and it's honestly beautiful it's really yummy um so definitely try and make one of those if you can or maybe if you want to make like a coke float or something like that with the soda fountain and then go over and get ice cream and put ice cream in your soda Ooh, just try different things yeah try and experience all the things and not just have your typical things that you would usually have in the dining rooms go and have some fun and experiment uh with the cookies and the ice cream and the drinks eat all of that yummy food because they do have a lot of delicious food on the ships let's talk about um seasickness so obviously people sometimes they don't know if they're going to get seasick or not or if you get motion sick say for instance in a plane you might know that if you've not been on a dizzy cruise before you possibly could get seasick on the ship don't pack your case full of seasick stuff because they do have seasickness tablets for free down in the medical center so you don't have to fill all of your luggage space with all of these remedies and medicines for seasickness they already have them on the ship for you to use so don't worry about that kind of thing they already provide it for you they also do have the medical center on board so if there is something wrong you can go there and you can go and sort yourself out there as well just so you know let's talk about ports I and mean, you don't have to go out on every single port and experience everything to the fullest you can make the most of an empty ship i would definitely recommend this the ships are so quiet when there's not really many people on board and you can really make the most of lots of different things that you wouldn't be able to do if it was super busy like for instance you could go in the pools or go on the slides and just enjoy the fact that the ship isn't as busy as it is when it's a sea day or everybody's back on board at the end of the night so yeah really make the most of an empty ship carry the wave phones with you the phones that they have in the staterooms there'll be two of them in each stateroom i know they look like they're something from the 90s but they are very helpful 
um, especially when there's no signal on the ship or there's not very much Wi-Fi and you want to keep in contact with people in your party you can ring people on them you can message people on them and also in the kids club when they want to keep in contact with you if they want to ring you about something or send you a message they'll generally do it through that wave phone because it's a lot more reliable than the app because with the app with the messaging feature on the app while i said it is good to be able to message each other on it sometimes you always have to refresh it because with the wi-fi being a bit patchy sometimes messages can come through a little bit later than you would like so you not always are up to date with that whereas the wave phones they go through straight away so usually um they have a pirate night and a formal night on the ship sometimes they have uh, other theme nights as well depending on if it's like say a star wars day at sea cruise uh, or halloween or something like that or marvel day at sea but for the most part they always have a pirate night and they have a formal night so make sure you get involved with that dress up and everything like that just so that you're part of the atmosphere and having a lot of fun as well like everybody else is obviously you don't have to dress up to have fun but if you really want to get yourself involved and like have the full cruise experience dress up as a pirate for pirate night dress up all fancy for formal night take your pictures as well on formal night and if you don't want to be in those formal clothes and high heels and everything um or a suit and everything all night then take the pictures that you want and then just change into your comfy clothes and just enjoy the rest of your night in that way. The kids clubs, I've briefly mentioned them but I haven't really talked about the age ranges and things like that. So you have the nursery which is for zero to three year olds. This is a pre-book it, like you have to book this and it's like a pay by the hour service so just bear that in mind. As well as that we have the Oceanic Club and the Oceanic Lab which is for three to 12 year olds. The rest of them edge vibe as well. You don't have to book for that um, or pay for that. You just bring them to the front of the gates check them in um but if your child is three to like four and they're not fully potty trained they will not be allowed in the spaces so we might recommend that if your child is three that you take them to the nursery because they are able to deal with nappies and diapers and things like that there if we notice that your child has a diaper a nappy a pull up on we will phone you up and be like hey take this off your child they're not allowed it if we notice they do have a lot of accidents a lot then we will maybe refer you to the nursery um so that they are able to be fully cared for properly without worrying about them soiling themselves or whatever if they're um three years old so just keep that in mind and yeah if you are going to maybe a dinner reservation or something that's an adult only experience and you're thinking of dropping your child off make sure that they are acclimated to the spaces because we have a lot of kids that get really upset when you're away or they're just not used to the spaces make sure that you take them in every now and again for a couple of minutes just to make sure that they're okay uh because we do get a lot of times where kids are so upset and distraught that you're not there and they're not having a good time as at all so we have to contact you then which can be a bit disappointing if you just want a couple of hours away from the kids and then you have to come back within like 10 minutes because your child is just not having it uh we also have edge and vibe so edge is for 11 to 14 year olds vibe is for 14 to 17 year olds these ones are a come and go as you please sort of situation the kids go in do whatever they like they can leave whenever they like um there are a lot less counselors in there so keep that in mind as well if your child is on that sort of cusp of being in oceanic club and ocean lab and edge and you are a little bit worried about them having free reign of walking around the ship do keep that in mind we're not constantly monitoring the kids in those spaces um, to make sure that they are staying where they're supposed to and we also have open houses a lot for the Oceania Club Lab Edge Vibe so that you can go and experience it as a family for maybe an hour or so every day because that is an everyday thing that happens um, sometimes twice a day as well in certain uh, spaces they have open houses so that you guys can experience the kids clubs too it's not just for the young it's also for the young at heart as I like to say so make a, uh, the most of that as well um, so that you can go and experience the spaces that are just designated for the kids so if you are heading off the ship or you're going to the pools or whatever they do have beach towels available for you to take um, upon the pool decks and everything and by the gangways and everything so you don't need to pack those with you save your merchandise buying space or clothes space for that exclusively you don't need to bring your own beach towels or towels or anything like that they're all provided on the ship for you so bring something to decorate your door with you i think that's a quite cool thing 
that you might not know about on your first Disney cruise. The doors in your staterooms, they are magnetic. So you can bring magnets and things to decorate your room and everything with. Some people go really hard and just go way over the top and make it look so cool. And have whole themes going on. So yeah, if you want to be the envy of your hallway on your first Disney cruise and like get in with all of the pro seasoned cruisers and have your room decorated really cool, you can, yeah, make decorations or bring magnets and things like that with you to decorate your door to make it look really cool. Don't wait until debark day to sort out any outstanding onboard fees that you have because the queues at guest services get unbelievably long on debark day and that's the last thing that you want to do on your cruise is wait in a really long line while you just want to get off the ship and just get it over with. I know people don't want to leave the ship they don't want to have to have that experience end but you also don't want to end it on like a really boring note by queuing up for a really long time to uh, sort out your onboard fees do it a couple of days before if you know you're not gonna spend that much that's gonna be put on your card or whatever um, yeah do it in time before that because you don't want to be queuing again like I said I'm just trying to save you this time of queuing for a really long time tip your servers and your room hosts and hostesses because yeah they earn a lot less than some people do on the ship and it's nice for you to appreciate them and have that gratitude you're seeing them every day especially your servers you're seeing them every time you eat food and your hostesses and your hosts in your rooms you know they're changing your room every day and making little magic moments in your room by making like towel animals and things like that or like leaving chocolates in your room and making sure that you have a great time in your room as well as outside of your room so tip those people because they're very important and you're seeing them all the time and you're creating those bonds with them so if you don't tip them it's a little bit like oh okay i see let's move on to debark day so you can leave your luggage the night before um outside your room and if it's before 10 pm at least and your stateroom hosts and everything will know to move it uh, so that they can put it with all of the other cases that get taken off the ship for you so that you don't have to like carry all the cases and everything off the ship because that's just another thing that's another stress at the end of your cruise is oh the luggage oh the children oh all of our merchandise you know what i mean there'll be breakfast available for you so you don't need to worry about that and being hungry for the majority of your day they have breakfast available for one last little hurrah in the dining rooms before you debark the ship there will not be shops open though we're not allowed to open shops or anything in the ports uh, just because of like legal reasons and everything like that so if you've waited until the last minute to do your shopping then there's nothing going to be available for you on debark day so make sure you do it beforehand if you have had a really great cruise and they give you the questionnaire to fill out fill it out because it's really helpful they'll leave it in your room so you can leave it in your room or put it in any of the um, boxes uh, near the atrium area on your last day um, so the debark day of your cruise they are really helpful for any department to know what things that you liked what things you didn't like what they could improve on what you might like to see in the future as well as that you can also put who your favorite kind of crew members were so if you've had a really great experience with somebody that you've experienced on the ship that's a crew member it can be really nice for them to hear that we do get fed that back to us and sometimes we get like a little reward for it as well for having those good guest comments and people that have enjoyed you as much as you, they've enjoyed spending time with you so yeah definitely make sure that you uh shout those people up that's all i have to say those are some tips and tricks that i have for you guys for your first disney cruise if you thought they were handy give this video a thumbs up if you have any other information that you think that people might want to know leave it down below in the comments if you want to see more content from me don't forget to subscribe to my channel that would mean a lot to me if you did and i will see you next time in another video goodbye